Welcome to Factorio MSX Gigabase. Well, uh, last time we were building our new devised uh, oil design. Um, and you'll notice we're actually on the map, we are fairly close to it. Um, we have gone on quite a long way here, and I'll come back to that. But what I want to do uh, now is in fact connect up the um, these four-way main sort of highways. Uh, this one sort of being the border of our, well, our interior for uh, now. Which means we need the, um, we need some landfill in here. So what I'm going to do is set up a quick landfill uh, station. Assuming that I have some train stops. Um, well, hopefully there's some on here, and there should be. Yes, there we go. Um, so, train stops. Let's put one here. And uh, this can be called Southwest Landfill. Because obviously we're in the southwest, and what we want to do is come over to our landfill train here, which still has 21,000 landfill on it. But that actually is not all that much. I have obviously oh, made that difficult to get to. Um, we want to go landfill to southwest landfill. There it is until circuit condition uh, until empty actually. Um, I inventory empty. Let's get rid of that one and let's head there now. Let's get rid of for now design test and south landfill. So there's our landfill train. Now let's uh, talk about what we've done. Um, first of all. There's one thing that I did off camera that I probably should have done on camera, and that is um, I've done some tuning up here. Now, if you recall, this used to be constantly a congested mess. Now, look at it. We have a bit of traffic going through, but otherwise, um, there's no there's no blockage at all. And um, now, admittedly, if we look at our stats, we're not going at absolute uh, maximum output, but uh, that is only telling a small part of the story. I mean, we are still producing 30 plus modules of both of the level 3 constantly, so that's not too bad. But what actually has happened is this. I have made an adjustment to the um, level at which we demand trains. So um, if you think of it like this, when a train comes in here, if it's one of the trains that's demanded, it is counted as one of those trains until it reaches the end, and then it's no longer considered one of the trains on the way, but the content of the train is added up and that reduces the number of trains that are being called. So I previously had set it to, we need three trains, so at some point as this unloads, it will say, right, I need three more trains to be on the way. So it will have one called um, that will fill the pre-stacker, then quite likely one that will fill the stacker, and that's two. So there is room for duplicates here to some degree, but when there isn't, they'll fill up here. And um, that, that bit up there is not good. And we don't really need duplicates here either. In fact, a minimal stacker here is all that we really want. And I was looking at the copper, which of course means this stacker. Um, the, the problem with copper was somewhat less. It was mainly iron. Um, yeah, the iron was blocking. And then a lot of these plate trains would come through and uh, find issues because they could, their path was blocked, which is partly why we needed this one. Oh, and by the way, that was 77 when we set it up. It's already down to 63. 
So we are hammering our way through that, even if we do have a lineup of copper trains here. Um, so yes, so I changed this to two, which would mean you'd have one in the pre-stacker and one here, but um, we're so on top of our green circuit production that the post-stacker is um, full at the moment and uh, there's trains trying to get out so we're just not using green circuits at nearly the rate. The hold up of course is red as discussed previously which is why of course we went into the whole business of our design down here. Now that brings me to this design which is largely complete. I haven't got the trains coming in but I'll, I'll come in and kind of explain it. So this one can take a 383 crude, uh, there's enough tanks to completely unload a 383. Then we have, as we set up last time, and I moved this just slightly to get it off uh, this area, so I just picked up the whole thing and moved it along so that we could be in this channel. And I've worked out that I only really need this one channel, so that should be relatively easy for uh, landfill when it comes time to slap down uh, multiple of these templates. Um, and if I want to scroll out a bit more, whoops, that wasn't quite what I had in mind. Um, Control L is the scroll when it's not auto saving. So that's kind of the whole thing. And Control K is the scroll in. If we move it over a little bit, whoops, that's K when you don't hit Control. That's K when you do. So. Yeah, so we've got crude in here, which is an input, and uh, all of the refineries along here, 20 in total. Um, what happens then, of course, is the heavy gets uh, shipped out to here, where we convert it to um, lubricant, and lubricant gets shipped out to uh, this station for removal, and I think with the number of these setups that we'll have, one of these will probably be sufficient, so that's what we've got. The rest is cracked to light. Um, speaking of light, all of these initial um, machines are our, um, well first of all, light to solid and then solid to rocket fuel. Um, we have more than the usual number of beacons affecting the rocket fuel uh, assembly machines, which is why we've achieved a 6.75 crafting speed and 40% productivity. Um, is that enough for one of these? I am not sure. It probably is not quite. Because uh, what is a what's our normal multiplication? Um, let's just go to like one of these ones. So normally it's 5.5 um, and we probably needed an increase of 30% which would have been 1.5 so that would take you up to about 7 um, and we're not quite at 7 so um, I might find that my rocket fuel production is actually slightly light with this 6.75 it's not quite 7 so uh, we might need more than the total number of these designs that I have planned on, but that's okay because um, this saves quite a lot of... Uh, it means we don't need bots, we're basically doing a direct feed from the solid fuel into the rocket fuel, um, and there's no need for any sort of bot interference there. So that's that design, I think there's 16 of these. Um, and the um, light fuel carries on because uh, there always will be, even if this is going at, at its maximum, there always will be surplus light fuel produced by this if this is working to its maximum capacity. So we then move into our uh, light to petroleum cracking, uh, which is all the way along here. Um, and it feeds out into our plastic creation and our sulfuric acid creation and the sulfuric acid will wrap round to these tanks and be picked up from this station 
um, the plastic will go in to this station and this one um, will take coal and I have finally started using the reduced numbers of um, uh, inserter machines um, because I don't think I will need uh, six for each of those so that's one way we can cut down on um, uh, entities and this one here that is actually incomplete is for the iron that we need for um, sulfuric acid and again a 383 but we go through the content of that fairly slowly so that's fine and just having a couple of inserters is fine the rocket fuel gets loaded here with um, they're basically taking one of the 48 stacks um, that is in the box uh, with each swing and you get two and a half swings per uh, stack inserter per second so five of the 48 items per second uh, within 10 seconds they will have emptied uh, well one box uh, you've only got 40 in fact um, so it's like eight seconds to completely fill a 383 with rocket fuel with just two so there's no point having more so we've saved uh, four by eight there that's 32 inserters over here we've saved six by eight there's another 48 so that's 80 inserters here we've saved another 32 so there's 112 inserters um, and yeah 132 inserters I expect to have about 12 of these so when you multiply uh, 132 by 12 you're starting to get into numbers that make it all worthwhile uh, that's almost 1600 um, so it's it's really two entities it's the uh, inserter and it's the um, requester or supply passive supply chest we don't need so I mean I, I guess the inserter probably uses more UPS than the chest but you never know so getting rid of um, 3200 entities in my expected oil uh, design is got to be a good thing now the other thing of course is we have two uh, let's turn on the bot networks this is a completely separate network from this one this one will deal in coal plastic and the iron for creating sulfuric acid this one is purely rocket fuel we probably I mean given that this is where they're delivering from and they're delivering to here that is a pretty small distance to travel so we are not going to need a lot of bots here we probably don't need all of these uh, likewise uh, we're not using barrels for sulfuric acid um, we're just pumping it through a tank which would mean that it's no better we can't do better than 1200 um, units per second but um, with uh, 12 of these was that 300,000 divided by I mean I'm not actually expecting one of these to fill in a really quick time and be taken away we're going to have like 12 of them so we only need one of those 12 to be ready whenever we need the supply of stock so that's sort of the thinking there but in any event um, 300,000 divided by 1200 is 250 so it's about a four minute fill from completely empty um, I would have to check to see if these things can actually uh, do that. Maybe they n it's possible they might need more pipes. So I'll, I'll look into that. That's part of what we're going to do because we are going to... The next phase of this is to embark on a, um, a test. And so that is why, like a test of how this performs. Um, I want to see if there's any... Uh, blockages, whether some things could work better, whether I need to double up pipes anywhere or put in uh, pumps, that sort of thing. So I'm going to test this one before I start slapping it down. So to that end, I have uh, built out 
this part of the outside uh, perimeter. I've um, cleared for safety reasons some biters in this sort of area to create a bit of a um, well, you know, a bit of space so that when our pollution cloud starts spreading out here, uh, we've probably got potential issues over here again because that's what pollution does. Um, but when the pollution cloud starts spreading from here, at least there's a bit of a buffer zone for it to spread through before we're likely to cause trouble because to bring this online we need some new oil. So I was kind of thinking of tapping that, these two as a combined, and this good one down here combined as well. Um, we won't be able to unload an oil train, empty it, and need another one instantly. It's not going to work that way. We could probably have a stack of about four of these even fed by uh, these guys, possibly. I'm not 100% sure of that, but possibly that would actually work. But in any event, we need to connect up this train to here to, and then um, create these oil outposts and um, create some temporary, because all this will be temporary, this will be copied and um, it's quite likely we'll actually have some down in this area but they'd kind of probably be over here um, because we need the water or maybe up here depending on where we put other bits of infrastructure really so uh, there's your longest uh, intro ever <laughs> Uh, never mind. So what we're going to do is we are going to do our usual uh, put everything in here, even the bots, because we will grab landfill first. Uh, what have I got in there? Oh, that's not going to do what I want. We need legs back and we will take so that was my building um, my building setup which I'll go back to when I um, are doing a bit more rail but we're going to do some landfill first because we need the train to be able to um, go down here so um, yeah, this is basically what I need to do. Fill this bit. And there we go. I think that's solid land now. So we need to bring that over to about there. We'll probably just paint enough to ensure that we can actually build this track. Uh, I am going to just grab some more because we're up here. Why not? It won't actually take that much to fill in this whole little bit to the side, um, to the west side of us. Any more little artifacts? No. Does not look like it. So yeah, with design. I did a chunk in last episode of the design and I mean it, that part hasn't really changed at all but um, you obviously didn't get the whole thing uh, live. It, um, I, I, I guess trying to provide some level of commentary that um, is not you know, just monotonous silence while I'm thinking about design um, and certainly I slept on um, bits of the design um, and I had to do calculations and all the rest of it. Uh, all the things they say, don't do live, don't do live maths. Never works out. And, you know, they're probably right. 
certainly make it's easy to make mistakes. This guy can't go anywhere because he needs um, some track. Let's just grab some track. And if we whack this in like um, like that. Annoying, annoying, annoying. Okay, no, I don't want all this stuff, guys. No, 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 no. Thank you. <laughs> um. Yes, well, so lost my train of thought now and once again right there we go all this stuff's in the wrong place don't need those guys anymore we can pick this one up as well um, I will worry about that some other time oh the um, that's good the landfill train is back having just slaughtered us and we can finish off this task we are going to run short of time so this episode was kind of a catch up show you what we're doing and um, do some of it I don't want it just to be landfill though so um, I guess I will just exhaust this little bit quickly and um, see if we can connect up the main lines at least I'll no doubt do a bit of off-camera work to speed up where we're at, maybe connect up some of the oil outposts, since we've already done that fairly recently in our playthrough, and um, do something more interesting, such as the infrastructure to support this uh, test oil. And then, of course, we should see quite a nice boost to red with the extra plastic that will be coming. Because we'll still be running the old oil for the moment, but probably not for too much longer. Um, it's uh, too bot heavy, so it's a way that we are going to help. Um, I assume it will uh, save us a bit of UPS to um, retire it, as it were. Now, you... Oh, we probably can't put that stuff back in there, but we can pick up these these and we can jump on board the engineering train and we can use good rail with this setup um, and control L a couple of times so that we can see actually scroll back in a couple of times too Oops. there we go uh, I need my bots for this to work. Oh, uh, that's probably not the set that I wanted then. Let's do that for starters, and then let's actually take those guys out and use that. So we've got twice as much charging, and since our movement is actually going to be via train, uh, we shouldn't need to worry too much about the reduced movement speed so yes we have avoided um, the water we've filled in enough to get past the water effect so that's excellent let's scroll out a little bit and carry on see we're very close to the oil here new oil can't wait to actually fire it up and I'm gonna be very curious too what we can do or how much um, cutting out the old oil will actually save on UPS is something like 3,000 um, bots 
there that are going constantly and traveling long distances, so yes, it could be quite interesting. Oops, why do I keep doing that? How are we going for resources? It looks like we need to uh, make a little trip back here, grab some of those, probably grab some of those, one of those. Um, we're not going through too many of those, but let's get some lights while we're at it. Because I do like to have my lights. I possibly should get a lighting mod to help. But we do have night vision, it's not quite the same as the beginning of the game without night vision when Factorio is certainly very, very dark indeed. Four lanes like this does certainly chew through your track. We've got 3,000 on board this train, but um, we will get through it pretty quickly. How far? Okay, we're getting quite close. So yes, the goal for the remainder of this episode is solely to join up these two lines, which will create a loop in our track but it shouldn't cause too many problems I hope <laughs> famous last words and yes once again we probably need to grab another um, set of track signals. These things we probably don't actually need, um, but we definitely do need signals. Might even grab some from here. More track. leap out, uh, maybe do a little bit of foliage clearing, see if we can work out where we need to go for the corner piece. I suspect we probably, well we probably want to clear a bit of foliage, but we probably want a, another um, piece to go along here make it a little bit easier to work that out and we're getting fairly close to being able to get all the track into one Yeah, one more will be too much, and one more that way would also be too much. Uh, so, let us see if we can find our just standard corner. Zooming it in like that may not have been quite the best idea. to tell in fact. Alright, um, we need to just run a line from here come on foliage we really can do without you Maybe one from here as well, this will just make it a lot easier to get our bearings with the corner. Not that it's that hard to replace it if we do make an error, but um, this just makes it a lot easier to not make those errors right. 
So there's our bearings. Um, that is where the track needs to go. We can remove the redundant piece that was put in there just as a guide. And uh, see if our four way can be made to connect up in some sort of sensible way. Sort of. Um, that was terrible. That was literally terrible. I'd like an undo button. We do not want that one. At all. stop there. The ever useful wires for the circuit network. The supply train and rubbish train of course still use the um, standard circuit network with combinators. They don't use they don't use this system at all. Try the same thing here. That goes there. Just see right. So yeah, that worked a bit better. We only have this very small connection to make, which we can do manually. Add in our wires and Bob's your uncle, as they say. Not that I have an uncle Bob, but you know, it's just a saying. So, um, next episode, I will probably have set up a little bit of oil that can be used to flow in here. We will probably set up the infrastructure to feed trains in here and handle their uh, exiting. Um, and then add it into. Oh, there's another crude we could use. Add it into um, our, you know, the, the whole thing. Uh, plastic coming up here, and so on and so forth. So, something to look forward to. Thanks for joining me in this one. I look forward to seeing you in the next. Bye bye for now.